And there we are. Woo! All righty. Good morning. How we doing? Cool. That was very convincing. That's a, that's a classic. Uh, awesome. Well, uh, welcome. Welcome to Rock Valley Christian Church, Feast of Tabernacles, day six of the feast. Very exciting. Um, a, a couple of thank yous. Uh, thank you, uh, Bronte, today for worship. It was beautiful. And uh, Izzy. Dude, okay, so many of you guys don't know this. Actually, you know that Izzy is our uh, chief musician. Uh, very special dude to, to me and to many of us. Um, it takes so much work to put together everything that goes on up here, and it is so wonderful to get to worship God. Amen? Yes. Izzy, thank you for coordinating it. He coordinates every song, every volunteer, uh, the, the timing, all of this stuff. It, I, I don't know how you do it, man. So thank you so much. Uh, one more thank you. Um, if your name is Stephanie Liesenfeld, will you, will you raise your hand? Oh, okay, Ste Stephanie Liesenfeld, there it is. Okay, so Stephanie Liesenfeld is our feast coordinator. I've never coordinated a feast. Um, I couldn't imagine coordinating a feast. Uh, she makes it look really easy. Uh, I can't imagine how hard it is, but Stephanie, thank you so much for coordinating all of this and putting this together. We really appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it, it's, a, it's a special time. Uh, awesome. Well, let's go ahead and dive right in. And I'm going to go to uh, an oldie but a goodie, uh, especially during the feast. Leviticus 23. Big surprise. So Leviticus 23 is, is kind of like a, a staple. Um, it talks about all the feasts of the Lord. Um, it, it's like the, the place to go where you just want to be able to see all of the feasts and holy days that God gave us, right? So Leviticus 23, and we'll start in verse uh, 33. And then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel saying, the 15th day of this seventh month shall be a feast of tabernacles for seven days to the Lord. So that's where we are today. Not on the, the 15th day, I think we're on the like 20th day technically. Um, on the first day, there should be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. For seven days, you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. On the eighth day, you shall have a holy convocation, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It is a sacred assembly, and you shall do no customary, customary work on it. So here we are, uh, Feast of Tabernacles. And the feast is a really beautiful time because uh, there's a lot to unpack. It's, some of the feast days are, are, are very minimal, maybe just a few lines, maybe just one line. Uh, some have a very clear purpose, but the Feast of Tabernacles, God, God actually gives us a lot to chew on. He says, all your males shall, shall appear before me. You shall not come empty-handed, uh, empty but come ready to give and rejoice, for I have blessed you, right? Um, he, he gives us some other really special things that we can look at. I would like to now drop down to verse 41. And this is where we're going to spend a good chunk of our time today. Not necessarily this verse, but this topic. Uh, you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord for seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths for seven days. All who are native Israelites shall dwell in booths, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So like I said, we're going to unpack this as much as we can for the next hour and 30, hour and 45 minutes or so. And, and uh, half, half of you are laughing, most of you are laughing because, uh, I, you know, I'm never going to live that one down. It was, it was probably about four years ago. Um, and I spoke, and I, I went for it was, it was a little while. Yeah, Cal, I, I, I'm sure 20 years from now, so Cal's still going to be alive. Yeah. And, and Cal came up to me today, and he said, no, no don't forget. <laughs> I've got a small bladder, okay? I can't make it that long. <laughs> uh, now, in all seriousness, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting to unpack this with you all. If you would please let me live that down, I would really appreciate <laughs> No, never. Right, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> I, have found, I have found 
um, in my walk with God that some of the most profound times in my life have, have been when I just ask a simple question, why? Why is it that God gives us the things that he does specifically? Why is it that he gave us the feast to begin with? Um, any of his feasts. And why is it, the question that we're begging today, why is it? So we'll read this again. You shall dwell in booths for seven days. That's verse 42. All who are native Israelites shall dwell in booths. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord, Yahweh your God. So why is it that, that this was an important part. I mean, it, it's the Feast of Tabernacles or the, feasts of Bo- the Feast of Booths. Why is it that not only did God make us dwell in booths, but, but he said, I want you to know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. Very, very interesting. So we're going to jump now to uh, Exodus. Um, Exodus chapter 13 So this is uh, legitimately, literally, literally, um, just moments after they were brought out of the the land of Egypt. Um, And I I think that this could give us a good uh, idea, at least where to start, um, as to why God would want us to remember this. And I want to take a look at uh, chapter 13. We're going to go to verse 20. So they took their journey from Succoth, encamped in Etham at the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so as to go by day and night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from before the people. So God frees them from Egypt He heard their cry, and he shows himself mighty. He frees them from Egypt, and he immediately brings them out to this place, and and he establishes his very presence with with the people, right? It says that he he gives them a pillar of cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night. Right out of the gate, what God is wanting to show his people is that, hey, I am right here with you. I have got you. You can trust me. And this pillar of cloud is, is uh, actually really incredible. If you uh, go just to chapter 14, and I believe it's uh, actually also in verse, we'll start in verse 19. And the angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went before them and stood behind them. So it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the Israelites. Thus it was a cloud of darkness to the one, and it gave light by night to the other, so that the one did not come near the other all that night. So not only is this cloud something that that God gives to guide them, but he also gave gave this as as a means of protection, at least in this instance. God is is showing himself so powerful and so mighty to his people right out of the gate, right? He's like, no, I got you. They're coming. No, I'm going to put my cloud here, and I'm going to put this cloud here. I'm going to give you light, and I'm going to protect you. And, uh, you know, it says in... uh, uh, we'll, we'll go there. It's the very, very last verse in the very last chapter in Exodus. Um, you don't have to go there. It's just a, a simple verse, but I want to read this to you. So this is verse 38 in chapter 40. For the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day and was fire, or, and fire was over it by night and in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. So this was something that, that God gave to them and he never took it away throughout all of their journeys, all the way until they made it to the promised land. This was something that, that he gave to them. Um, and it says in uh, Numbers chapter 9, um, it, it kind of dives into uh, some of the uh, logistics of the cloud. And it says that, you know what? He, he would come down on the tabernacle and they would rest. And then when it would come up, they, they would move. And whether it was just, just an evening and a morning, we're here done, or whether it was two days, or whether it was a month, or whether it was an entire year, they were basically given complete direction. And in part, what, what God was establishing was, you are going to rely on me completely. 
I'm going to bring you out into this wilderness, and I'm going to guide you, and you can look to me. Literally, look to me. Literally, babe. But one of my wife's biggest pet peeves is when people use literally when it's not literal. So, literally, look to me. Day and night, and I will always be with you as, as a constant reminder that I am here. Um, so there, God, God uh, establishes a constant reminder, a, a source of complete and, and utter dependence that the people can have and look to day and night. Now, Exodus chapter 8 is really good for being able to see it, exactly what God was after in making the children of Israel dwell in booths. Um, and we'll start in verse 1, chapter 8. Uh, not Exodus, um, sorry, Deuteronomy chapter 8. So Deuteronomy chapter 8. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness. So right there, you... I, I made you dwell in the wilderness intentionally. And that, that was a huge part of dwelling in booths as I, I think fairly synonymous with having to go through this wilderness journey. So he says, and you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to test you, to know what was in your hearts, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he gave the children of Israel this, this wilderness journey, dwelling in booths for, for 40 years straight, to humble them and to test them, to know what was in their hearts, whether they would keep his commandments. In the Feast of Tabernacles, he, he says, I want you to know that I made them dwell in booths. So that even though you're not dwelling in booths, you will dwell in booths for this time so you can know and remember and see my heart. That I want to know your heart to test you to see whether you will keep my commandments. He goes on, uh, verse 3. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know. That he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Complete and utter dependence, that man would not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. I brought you in this wilderness so that you would know that. Going on in verse four. Your garments did not wear out, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. You shall know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. So these are really, really powerful verses. There is a lot going on just in these few verses. God is saying, I made you dwell in the wilderness, dwell in booths, very intentionally, very specifically, so that you would learn complete and utter dependence on me. So that you will know, and so that we will both know by this test, whether, whether or not your heart is, is true towards me, whether or not you, you will be faithful to me and keep my commandments, which is especially important in this old covenant that was established basically as a covenant that says, you obey me and I bless you, right? Complete and utter dependence, test you, know what's in your heart, so that I would chasten you as a, as a father chastens his son because I love you. We'll read that verse again. So that you'd know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. So every single year, the, the people of Israel get to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. They, they get a physical reminder. They dwell in booths. And they're to rejoice, and they're you know, coming to see the face of God literally as, as, it, as it translates. But they're to know that God made the people of Israel dwell in booths for, for these reasons. Really powerful. And if I were an Israelite, 
if we were Israelites back then, th this would be a really powerful and awesome reminder. Um, the, the funny thing is we're not Israelites, right? Um, I'm not an Israelite. Is, is there any, actually, I, I'd hate to speak on behalf of anyone. Is there any Israelites here? No, okay. <laughs> that would have really messed up the rest of the message. <laughs> Kidding, no. I, I think it'd still apply. Um, so we're, we're, <laughs> uh, we're, not, we're not Israelites. And we, we can take a look at this and we can be like, okay, cool. So this is like a, a fun reminder for, for them and it makes sense. And we'll, we could just take that and leave that there and then kind of move on with our lives. But we're not going to do that, are we? Because even though we are not Israelites, we are here today. And we are here this week. Why are we here? Anyone. To celebrate, to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, right? So even, even though we are not Israelites, e even though we're not, we're, we're not here, we are still wanting to come and worship God. And we are wanting to celebrate these feasts because, you know, if you were stuck on an island and, and you were only given this Bible and you were to read from beginning to end, you would, and you said in your heart, you know what, God, I want what you want for me. You would, you'd be doing this, wouldn't you? Because, because that's what he says to do. So now, now we're here and we're like, okay, yes, we are going to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. And just as he said to them today, he is saying, I made you dwell in booths intentionally, specifically for a reason. You know, I, I find it fascinating because God can, you know, he kind of, he, he wrote the rule book. He created everything. He, he is the creator. I find it fascinating that God didn't just free the people of Israel and just like, just take them to the promised land, right? And we already know in part why, why he didn't do that because the journey was more valuable than the destination, isn't it true in our lives as well? God, God has called each and every one of you to be in relationship with him. And in doing so, he has said, you know what? I made you dwell in, in booths, figuratively, not literally, figuratively. Because I want to chasten you. <laughs> which I, I, I think there's negative connotations with the word chase. And honestly, it's a beautiful word. It, it basically just means I, I want to train you. I want to guide you. I want to teach you. Um, I, actually, uh, Hebrews chapter 12 says some, some really beautiful things. Hebrews chapter 12, uh, starting in verse, I believe it's verse seven. I want to chasten you. Why? So Hebrews 12, 7, if you endure the chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there from a father does, uh, uh, whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. So not only is, is chastening a part of this, this walk, this journey, but it says, if you don't partake in the chastening, then you are an illegitimate son. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who correct us. And we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjugation to the father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chastened us, as it seemed best to them. But he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness... Now, no chastening seems to be joyful in the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. That's kind of beautiful. To those who have been trained by it. So just as the Israelites were made to dwell in booths, to be chastened by God, so too God gives us this journey to be chastened, to actually make us legitimate children of God, so that the fruit of righteousness 
can be brought forth within us. And I think it's also interesting, speaking of dependence and complete and utter dependence, just as the people of Israel were completely dependent on God, that he, you know, their clothes didn't wear out, their feet didn't swell, even though they walked for 40, 40 years straight. I couldn't even imagine that. I've got some friends who, like, go on walks and runs. Um, and that's not me, not by any means. <laughs> um, and I, I think some of us are like that. So walking, running is terrible. So seriously, I, I judge you if you run. Uh, <laughs> um, for 40 years, and their feet didn't swell. Their clothes didn't wear out. He, had, he gave them this pillar by day and night, completely guiding them, complete and utter dependence. And, and here, the peaceful fruit of righteousness. Um, Jesus said in John chapter 15, John chapter 15, Speaking of fruit, and we'll, we'll start from the beginning. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Nothing. You want to talk complete and utter dependence right there? For without me, you can do nothing. Not some things. Nothing. You want to do anything, you can only do it by abiding in him. God made us dwell in booths. God made us live in this journey intentionally to teach us these things, to humble us, to, to test us and show us what is in our hearts. And so there's this, uh, um, it's not an original thought. I was taught this. Um, there, there's this juxtaposition of like Western worldview and Eastern worldview. There's like our, our kind of like Westernized approach to, to life and just how we think, how we're wired. And there's like a completely different like mindset and thought process and approach to life that um, if you lived thousands of years ago, it would have been very natural to, to subscribe to. And one, one thing that I've learned is that when, when God says that he tested them, um, it's not like a test. Like, I think we, we, Western worldview approach is very, like, linear. It's like cause and result. It's like cause and effect. Um, it's this happens, ergo, this happens. And so you, you hear this testing, and you're like, okay, so God tested us. So it's a, either we're going to pass this test or we're going to fail this test. But the, the Eastern worldview approach, is, it's actually much more uh, deep and beautiful than just this binary A, B, pass, or fail. The reality is the, the end result, ju just like the journey, doesn't matter so much as that the test is valuable to show you what is in your heart. So even if you fail, you still learn because the the purpose of the test wasn't to, to pass or fail. The purpose of the test was the test. And we go through this life um, doing our absolute best, and sometimes we feel, feel like we're complete and utter failures. It's like, there we go. But you know what? That, that's kind of the point. It, it's kind of the point because it brings you to this point where, where you see just how miserable you can possibly be as a human being. And that's, that's the point. You can see what is in your heart. It's, it's very easy to be humbled in this life if you, if you allow yourself to. Um, so people may or may not know this about me. I'm an extrovert. Um, now, I, I've, I've made that joke before, but I, I may make it again today because it, it's that funny. Um, legitimately, if you know me... <laughs> Josh, Josh is a very dear friend of mine. Love him to death. Josh makes fun of me consistently about, about the fact that I'm an extrovert. We're on the ride at a, a Belmont Park. 
and it, it spins, and then it goes up, and then it spins, and it goes up, and it's so much fun. If you didn't do it, oh, it's, it's a blast. Um, and my favorite part is like, like you're at the top, and you're just looking down, and there's all the people look down and looking down or looking up at you as you're looking, and you're just like, oh, what's up? And Josh is like, yeah, you would. Complete and utter stranger, hi, I want to be best friends with you. Like that, <laughs> I guess that, that's just how God made me. So I, I'm kind of an extrovert, right? And I love the feast for, for that exact reason. I love getting to come here and see faces that I only get to see once a year, meet some new faces, a lot of familiar faces, and just get to fellowship day in and day out for, for this eight days. And I think that we're all, we're all aligned here, extrovert or not. It, honestly, it doesn't matter. Even if you're a complete introvert, even if you don't even necessarily like people, there's something about this specifically, right? Is there anybody here who doesn't generally like people that, that can ag agree with me that like even this time is a really valuable, beautiful time, right? <laughs> it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And I, I think that that's one of the things that we can very naturally connect with here at the feast is we, we get to live and recreate for, for just a snapshot what we can look forward to eternity with him. That's something that I think we can all latch on to and love and look forward to. But here we are. Stephanie, you were talking about it today. It was, it's day six. We're like, like day five, you're kind of starting to feel it. Day one through four, you're not feeling it at all, but it's day six now and you're feeling it. What are you feeling? You're feeling that like, oh, okay. It's a, I mean, the feast is basic. It's not basically over, but it's like almost over. It's like <laughs> today's going to fly by. Tomorrow's going to fly by. Then it's day eight. And you may be going home day eight or maybe you're staying an extra full day if you're smart and you're, you're going home on Sunday. You're feeling it. What are you feeling? You're feeling, okay. We're almost done. I'm sad. Sad that I, I, I have to leave this. And I got to go back to life. I got to, you know, maybe, maybe you work. And I, I got to get back to get back to the grind. I, I'm traveling right on Monday. I'm, I'm going to be going, going out to Atlanta for a few days. And maybe you... Maybe you don't love your job, and you like, got to get back to it. Or maybe, like, you don't like where you live, or, or maybe everything's totally fine, but you're still just parting with this. You're going to get back to real life. And one thing that, that is really important to remember in, in this feast and dwelling in booths and the reminder today just as the other feasts are reminders about the things that we can learn with the veil removed through Christ, we don't just celebrate them. We don't just remember them once a year. Take atonement as an example. We just all celebrated atonement. Atonement is, is a reminder every year of, of the, the cleansing and beautiful work that Jesus did for us, right? But do we just remember that and celebrate that on atonement? Or is that something that ought to be a part of our walk every single day? Or Christ our Passover? Or remembering the fact that, that Jesus is going to return in the first place and celebrating trumpets? Like what... That, that's not just a one-time thing. That is all the time. And even so, even though this is just a, a time to, to be reminded of these things, to be reminded that we were made to dwell in booths, to know that God intentionally gave you this journey to dwell in booths, how important is it to remember next week and the week after that and a month from now, and three months from now. We have an opportunity every day to remember that God intentionally made us dwell in booths. Now, in this, in this reminder, ultimately, what was God after? What was God after with the people of Israel? What is God after with us? 
obviously, to, to humble you and to test you, to see what's in your hearts, to, to learn to completely rely on him. You know what God's after in this? Relationship with you. Now, for the people of Israel, his relationship was, was established with what, what's called the old covenant. That, that old covenant says, you obey me and I bless you. You disobey me and I curse you. The blessings and cursings. That's like the foundation of this, this covenant was very much so strictly like based on your obedience. And obedience doesn't change. We're called to be obedient. The reason that God made us dwell in booths is to bring us to the point where you're like this. Because if you live this life, if you live this journey, if you dwell in booths, and let alone like the actual journey, the physical booth, this thing, you can't help but be humbled. God created you exactly as you are with this sack of flesh intentionally because he wants relationship with you. Um, Romans 7 is, is great for this. Uh, Romans 7. So Romans 7, God made you this way. He didn't, he didn't make you accidentally. He made you very intentionally like this. He, he created you. And we'll, we'll start um, in verse 15. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will not do, that I do not partake. But what I hate, that I do. This is Paul writing, by the way. He's one of the most incredible men of all time, right? This is Paul writing, saying this, being so honest and real with us. If then I do what I will not do, I agree with the law that it is good, but now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells in me. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the, the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now, if I do what I want not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Verse 22, I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law in my mind and bringing me into the captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? God didn't just make you to dwell in booths in this journey. God made you, literally. Paul talks about this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. To have this tent. Why? To bring you to the point, to humble you, to show you what's in your heart to bring you to that point where you look at the, the one who also, also had a tent, Jesus. And as, as we go about our life next week or three weeks from now or three months from now, every time that, that you feel like you're being chastened or maybe you're physically, not like in like a sin nature flesh way, but just physically like, feeling tired or having back issues or you're pregnant and now your body's broken. It's like, my wife knows about that. She's had four kids. You have a constant reminder, literally every day, all the time, always, when you, especially when things are rough or things are hard, to remember that God did that intentionally to bring you to his son. Because that is the only way to have relationship with him, right? Uh, Juan gave a great message yesterday, and he, he went to first, or Second Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verse 17. And um, we're, we're going to close here. So we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 
And we'll start in verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have passed away. Oh, behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God. Who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation? That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Now check this out. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. And I, I think we're all very familiar with these verses, but just consider this for a moment. That this isn't just a one-time thing. This isn't just a, a, a nice reminder right now, but this is every day, every week, all the time. As you're going about and you're in this, this journey in the wilderness, dwell, dwelling in booths, that Jesus had a very intentional journey and that he who knew no sin became your sin, that you might become the righteousness of God. Because why? As much as this life can feel like it's about you and me, it's so much more than that. I, I love, uh, who, who was it? It might have been, been William or Juan. I don't know. All the messages were phenomenal up until this point. Who... <laughs> Um, he said, he said, you may be the only God with us that somebody sees that day or that week or that month. Maybe the only God with us that that person has ever known and will ever know. God made us dwell in booths to be the righteousness of God through his, his son, the so that we can be his righteousness and so that we can be that light to others because Lord knows, especially in today's day and age, the world needs it so badly, now more than ever. They need us. So remember, God, God made us dwell in booths intentionally, specifically for this purpose, for this higher calling. And Jesus set the, the, the ultimate perfect example for us and um, I, I just want to want to plead. It may be really like maybe you're scared to get back to work, or maybe you're scared to get back to life because statistically, chances are there there's a there's some of us who may be struggling with substance abuse. Ten percent of the population, substance abuse, of some kind. There, statistically, there's there's some of us who are in the middle of a really rocky marriage. About half the marriages these days, are, and that's Christian church or not, are, are getting, getting divorces, right? Statistically, 87% of us are addicted to our phones. I made that one up. I, I assume it's, it's, pro it's, it's, probably, it's probably true. I, I don't know. Right? Tell me I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe, maybe... Part of why you love the feast so much and you're, you're afraid to get back to, to real life, maybe you're not afraid. Maybe life is great and this is already something that you're walking in, but maybe you're, there's some apprehension there because you know that with, with real life becomes real problems, real struggles, real temptations, tiredness, loneliness, depression, If, that, if that's where you're at, then I, I just want to invite anybody and everybody right where you are in your heart. And we've got a prayer team up during the last song and afterwards. Like, don't, don't run away from this. Like, this is your opportunity. Today is the day that, that you can get prayer with somebody else. That's why we're here. And you can, you can be free from it. 
because of what we talked about. And you know what? God made you with this sin nature in part to bring you to that point of like, ah, ah, in my heart. Don't run from that. Run to it. Throw it out there. Say, God, this is who I am. God didn't make a mistake in creating you, and he certainly didn't make a mistake in giving you this journey. And he absolutely did not make a mistake in giving you this, this tent. So we can look forward to eternity, and we can look forward to next year and the year after that, and I, I hope that, that we can stay connected throughout the year. Um, God loves you so much. And don't, don't forget that he's always there with you. And you've got those constant reminders throughout the days, throughout the weeks. Wear this with you all the time and watch the power that God will do in your life. Amen? Amen.